Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com, and thank you for being open and willing to take my course, The Big Basics to Options Trading. Before I get into the course, just very quickly, because I want to respect and honor your time, if you are looking for like mathematical definitions and looking for a deep dive into the equations and all the theory of options, you're not going to get that here. This is a course designed for those people wanting to day trade options meaning you are looking to be in and out of things relatively quickly, usually within the same day. Maybe hold a couple of days, but you're definitely not willing and wanting to hold for weeks or months or anything like that. You're not an investor, you are looking to trade options, and that is here who this course is geared for. But again, if you're here because you want the nitty gritty details of the mathematical equations in theory, that's not gonna be here. It is gonna be, hence its name, the core just basics of options trading. So with that being said, let's get to it. Welcome to my desktop here and let's get right into it and start with the big basics of options day trading and just give you a good, quick and practical jumpstart to your understanding of how to day trade options. Now what are options? There's a couple different layers here that I wanna go over, but let's just start at the very, very basics. Options are derivatives. Now that can be kind of a big word, maybe a little of intimidating, but it's not. All derivative means is that the price movement of the option itself depends on something else. It is determined by something else. It is derived from something else. So whatever terminology best fits in your mind, for me, I just like to say, well, because it's a derivative, the pricing of an options and how it moves is going to depend on something else. It's as simple as that. It has nothing to do, the options price itself doesn't just move. In order for it to move, it's gonna depend on something else because it's the derivative and it's really as straightforward as that. Now, what does it actually depend on? So yes, an option has a value, but what is that value going up and down for? What's causing that to actually play out? Well, it depends on what happens with, in this situation, a stock, right? So based on how a stock moves, that's gonna de determine how the options value itself actually moves. So if you wanna be a cool kid, if you wanna impress your friends, impress your family, if you wanna just be a cool kid, throw some trading terms out there, that would be known as a stock option. And I specify stock because yes, there are other types of options out there. There's options in the, you know, in the Forex market and you know, in the futures market, but we're not talking about any of those options. Now the principle stays the same. Those options would depend on how some sort of currency you know, moves and stuff like that. But because in this situation, we're talking about stocks, I'm just gonna stick with stock options. So that's how it's determined. Those options values are moving, depending on what happens with the stock itself. So let's just do a quick little quiz here uh, to prove to you that you're already getting a big, quick understanding of some of these big basics. So let's say that we have Apple. So my question to you is this, the options for Apple, the value of, the, of that, what is actually gonna de that depend on? Well, if you said, well, Clay, that's gonna depend on how Apple stock behaves. Well, hey, good job, you just aced the quiz. Nothing fancy here at all. Apple options are gonna depend, their movements will be dependent, you know, will be dependent on, well, how Apple stock itself moves. So again, let's be a cool kid. In terms of the trading lingo, you would be talking about Apple stock options. So you can go to your family, your friends, whoever you wanna impress, be like, yeah, today I was learning about, or today I was trading Apple stock options. And you're gonna be, they're gonna be like, wait, what? I've heard a stock, what? Oh, show me more. So I promise you're gonna sound super, super cool with that sort of lingo. But that's it. There are derivatives. The derivatives depend on how a stock moves. And then when you boil it down a little bit more, if we were looking at Apple, well, the Apple options will depend on how Apple stock behaves. As straightforward, as simple as that. Now, options are other things, and they are actually contracts. Now, they're not the type of contract that you might think where you gotta go meet up, sign paperwork, all that stuff, but that's that's not how it is at all. For me, at least. I remember when I heard, I'm like, okay, so contracts, contracts, do I need like a lawyer? Like, what, what's going on here? I mean, but nothing like that. It's all digital, it's all online, and it's all done in literally the click of a mouse. So your platform, all that is going to uh, facilitate it all. But no, you don't need like a lawyer standing over your shoulder. You don't need to, you know, go and hire, a, you know, a legal team. 
It's nothing like that. You don't have to like poke your finger and sign in blood. None of those things are required. Everything is online. But yes, as far as the lingo and as far as, you know, just the basics, well, they're technically speaking options contracts that are being traded. So what does this contract actually include? Well, the first part of the contract is, well, the value of the contract itself, which we've talked about, right? Those values fluctuate and we've already talked about all that, but that is still part of the contract. These contracts have a value and then those values go up and down. Next part, the strike price. And we're gonna get more on that here in the next section here. So more details on that coming soon, but regardless, that is a part of the options contract is a strike price. And then finally, like any contract, there's gonna be some sort of date assigned to it, and there's a situation called an expiration date where the contract is no longer valid, it expires. And that can be something you care about a lot, it cannot be something that th those sorts of kind of whys, ifs are outside of the scope of this, but for the point of just the big basics, understand that a contract also includes an expiration date. So this is not like a stock where you can just buy a stock and hold and hold and hold and hold forever. Options, that's not gonna be the case because those contracts will eventually expire. Uh, so, you know, that's a, a big difference from a stock is because stocks are, well, stocks, they're not contracts, a stock's just not gonna expire. But a contract, like any contract, is going to expire. So that is a big difference. Um, and again, how much, in what ways does that expiration date affect you? Again, that's gonna be outside of the scope of this course, but just realize that that is going to be definitely one of the big differences between stocks and options is that expiration date because once again, they are contracts. But let's talk more about the strike price here. And the strike price revolves around, maybe you can guess it, well, the stock, right? Everything is dependent on the stock itself. So what do I mean by that? Well, it refers to some sort of pricing level associated with the stock itself. So if you're looking at a stock, again, the, a stock itself is gonna have a bunch of price levels. Now, yes, the stock may not be at that particular price level, but those price levels are still gonna be out there. And each of those price levels themselves have contracts attached to them. And each of those price levels, they're not called strike price levels, right? They're called strike prices. But that's all the strike price is, is just a number, a number associated with that stock and it's gonna be a certain price. Now they're usually gonna be, and this can vary, but in this situation you can see 45, 46. So you're never gonna have a strike, I, I guess I can never say never, but I've never seen where you would have a strike price where it's, for example, $45.17. I suppose that could theoretically happen, but I've never seen it. They're usually gonna be those round numbers. Now, maybe could you have a 45.50? Sure. Could you have a, you know, uh, you know, someplace in between there? Yeah, but, uh, you know, and, not, and that'll get more common with the more expensive a stock gets. So you could have a 602.50, you could have a 605, you could have a 607.50. But point here being is they're just pricing levels. So I don't wanna overcomplicate it because there's nothing to be complicated. You know a, a stock has a price. And if a stock is trading at $50, well then you know that a stock could go to 51, a stock could go to 48, stock could go to 60, stock could go to 30. But each of those pricing levels, <clears throat> cough, cough, strike prices are gonna be part of the options and are going to have uh, you know, uh, you know, contracts associated with them. Okay, Clay, I, I get it. There's a stock price and I, yes, Clay, I realize that stock prices can move and I realize that, okay, there are contracts associated with each of these price levels where the price could move to, might not move to. So which one actually matters? Well, hey, welcome to the wonderful world of trading. I, 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 there's a many reasons why you could think a particular strike price matters. Somebody else may look at that strike price and say, no, I disagree. I don't think that matters in the way that you believe it matters. So which one matters? That's up to you, your strategy, your thesis, your opinion, what you're looking at, your decision-making process. And I'm not here to call you or tell you, now, I guess I, I, I was gonna say, I'm not here to tell you how you can do it. I'm not here to say that there's one, one size fits all strategy, but I guess that's not true because if you're randomly just throwing a dart and it lands and you're like, okay, I'm gonna use that strike price. Okay, that, that might be a little sketchy, but outside of that, as far as which one matters, that's the challenge, right? That's the fun part is you've gotta come up and you've gotta have some sort of decision-making process in place that leads you to the point where you can say, yeah, okay, I think that strike price matters for this reason and that reason, so those are gonna be the contracts that I care about. But again, as far as the what, 
the how you arrive there, the why you believe that strike price matters, that is prepare for battle because that is the battle that we as traders in the options realm have to deal with is we have to figure out, all right, well, what, what sort of strike price, what sort of pricing level is gonna matter for whatever strategy is being done? And I realize I'm kind of rambling on with this point, but I wanna make that very clear that it's just a matter of there's no right or wrong answer in terms of, oh, no, no, well, that strike price or that strike price. No, it's what is your strategy? What are the tools that you're using to, to arrive at that decision? And then that's gonna be what the best strike price is for you. That's gonna be the one that matters most. And then over there, you can see once again, that expiration date, which I wanna kinda of hammer home because that is the big difference with the stocks and options. And by the t time this you know this little you know class here is over, hopefully you're saying, yes, Clay, I know the big difference is options are contracts and because they're contracts, they have expiration dates. But I'm, I'm gonna just keep on hammering that home because it is a, a, a big difference in something uh, where in other words, the hold and hope you just can't do that with options. Or yeah, you can't do that with options. You could do it with stocks. But the strike price, again, is just simply a price level that revolves around the stock itself. Now, there are two kinds of options out there. The first type is called call contracts. So call contracts. If the stock goes up, so again, as far as the realm of call contracts, if the stock goes up, then the call contract value is gonna rise itself. So if you think a stock is gonna go up and you buy the call contract and the stock does go up, well, hey, guess what? You're, you're, that's a good good decision on your part. Now, okay, okay, and the easy way that I remember this is just cup, right? Cup starts with C and it's part of up. So if you think that a stock price is going to go up, think of cup, which means you want a call option, okay? So just cup, easy method to remember, okay, which, which, which one, what is a call? Call is a cup, cup, you want it to go up. Now you also have put contracts. So in this situation, if the stock goes down, so you think a stock is gonna go down, so you buy put contracts and the stock goes down, well then the put contract value is going to go up. Now maybe seems a little backwards, but remember, let's think about it. If you think that a stock price is gonna go down, so you buy one of these put contracts, well, you were right. And if you are right, the market's gonna reward you by having that put contract value go up in value. Now, this is a form of shorting, of going short. So if you've never heard of those terms before in the world of the stock market, uh, that just means making money when values go down. And it's super bizarre, wait, you can make money even if something goes down? If a stock price goes down, you can still make money? You absolutely can. Again, with stocks, that's known as going short, shorting. But in the world of options trading here, that's just known as you know playing a put, trading a put, picking up a put. Anytime that somebody's talking about a put that they're buying, that is their way of just communicating so you understand the lingo that they believe that the stock will go down. And if the stock does go down, well, hey, they are gonna be rewarded because their put contract value is going to go up because they were right. All right, Clay, I get it. Call is a cup and you want up. So how do you remember put? Maybe this is very childish on my part, I don't know. But just think of the toilet, right? We wanna put the bad down the toilet, okay? We wanna put the bad stuff down the toilet. So that's how I remember put. Puts are associated with down. You think that the price is gonna go down. You want the price to go down because that means your put contract value will go up. So cup means calls because you think the price is gonna go, of the stock is gonna go up. We want to put the bad stuff down the toilet. So put contracts revolve around you wanting to see the price go down in value. So let's have a little quiz here again to make sure we're understanding everything. So let's talk about call contracts here. Remember, cup, we want to see stuff go up. So if the stock goes down, and again, it's a cup, we want to see it go up, but yet the stock goes down, well then what do you think the call contract value is going to do? Well, it's going to go down. In this situation, you are wrong. So you will be losing money on that trade. Because again, if you're, if you're buying call contracts, that means you believe the stock is gonna go up. But if the stock goes down, well then yeah, you're going to lose money. On the flip side, put contract. Remember, what do we want for put? Well, we wanna put that bad stuff down the toilet. So you wanna see that stock go down. So if the stock then goes up in value, so you buy a put contract, and then all of a sudden the stock itself starts to go up, you know, that, that's not good, right? If, we were, if we're trying to flush stuff down the toilet and the stuff that we're trying to, you know, that bad stuff we're trying to put down the toilet starts to come up, 
That's not a good situation. So that's, hopefully you see where I'm going here, but the, con, the put contract value in this situation is gonna go down. So yes, and, and, it, and it can be very bizarre because you show up in the markets, or I would say 90% of people show up in the market and they're thinking, I just wanna see stuff go up. I wanna see stuff go up. So in this situation, that's very bizarre to, to know and to think that you're seeing the stock price go up, but yet you're actually gonna be losing money on that trade because, well, puts, you know, that's like an overflowing toilet. When you, when you have a put contract, yet you see the price continuing to go up and up. You know, get the plunger because that's just not a good situation. But those are the two types of contracts. As simple as that. Just those big basics. Call contracts, cup. Want to see it go up. Put contract, let's put that bad stuff down the toilet. You want to see the stock price go down. Now, what about options quote? So, and, and this can vary a little bit, but at the core, they're all saying the same thing. So right here, we're looking at one for my broker. Now, for example, you see the word call there. In some, there may just be a C. and But the C represents call. And you now know what a call is. Uh, but actually, let, impromptu quiz. What direction would, if you're buying a call, what direction do you believe the stock is gonna head? If you're saying up, good job. Cup, cup, up, and that's where we have the call here. But like I said, so everything can vary. Maybe the date looks a little bit the you know different. Maybe the order is a little bit different. Maybe call is up front. So like I said, the options quote can look a little different from platform to platform, from broker to broker. However, they are still all telling you the same thing. So let's just break down this quote. But right here, and, and again, there's nothing fancy. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. Well, I'm kind of trying to insult your intelligence. Just that way you can have the confidence that, yeah, okay, options trading, it's, it's really not as difficult as what I thought it was once you get these big basics underway. So right there on the options quote, that just represents the stock the option value depends on, right? Because they're derivatives. So that's all it's telling you is in this situation, this options contract is depending on, well, the actual stock of Tesla. The next part right there, that is the expiration date of the contract, which we've talked about uh, quite a bit now. The next part right there is going to be the strike price, so this is, again, the strike price that the trader thinks matters. Um, I, I promise I won't ramble this time, but remember why that level matters, how the trader arrives at that decision. That There are many methods for that. There are many theories on how you should best do that. But the point is, that is the, the pricing level that for whatever reason, if the trader thinks has some sort of value, has some sort of significance uh, within their strategy, then that is what it's telling us. And then right there, call. That is just the type of the option contract that is being looked at. So let's do a quick quiz here and let's look at that, uh, another options quote right there and let's compare. So my question to you here is what is the same? So if you wanna pause the video, uh, I'll, let, I'll give you a second here. Okay, if you pause it, welcome back, if not. So what is the same? Well, the same from the other options quote we were looking at is, well, it, it is still for Tesla and that expiration date is still the same. What about what's different? If you said, well, Clay, I noticed that the strike price is different because the first one, the strike price was 605, but in this one, it's 630. And the other thing that was different is, well, this one is a put contract. And once again, depending on the broker, maybe they just put the letter P there. I don't know, if I, if I ever started a brokerage, I would put a toilet there or maybe a toilet handle. Because remember, put, we want to put the bad stuff down. So if any, if, if, you're, if you're a programmer and watching this and you want to, you know, Hook up, hook me up, and we want to, you know, go 50-50 in terms of starting our own online options broker. We totally need to do that. Instead of putting put in the options quote, let's just put like a toilet, and then for the call, we can put cups. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section. Is that a good idea? Probably not. Anyways, let's keep on moving. But there you go. You now know how to read an options quote. And I just emphasize that because I remember when I started, I'm like, wait, what? What am I looking at? Man, stocks are so much easier. It's four letters or three letters or two letters. But now I'm looking at all of that. What, what is all this? But when you break it down, it's really not that bad at all. Now, how much money? This is super important, super wise question on your part. Okay, Clay, that, that's great. I understand. You're right. It's not difficult. But I mean, how much money am I gonna, is going to be required for me to be able to, to day trade these options? So I want you to repeat this quite a bit, all right? Like as in over and over again, because as you see from this point forward, these numbers and this concept is gonna keep on coming up, but it's great. It's not a difficult concept at all. One contract represents 100 shares. One contract represents 100 shares. And just one more time, say it with me now, unless you're at the library, say it in your head. One contract represents 100 shares, okay? Just that does, how much does one contract represent? 100 shares. So 
How is this helping us? How is this gonna be factoring into the math and how much money is needed? Well, it is super easy math. All the math revolves around is the contract value and you're gonna multiply that by 100 and then you're gonna multiply that by the number of contracts that you wanna actually buy. So quiz question here, just to prove how easy it is. So Billy Bob wants to buy three contracts of an options contract valued at $1.75. So how much money does he need? How much cheddar, how much of that cash does he actually need? Well, let's get out our calculator and let's plug it into that very, very complicated equation over there. Well, so the first thing is the contract value. What, what is it? Well, it's at $1.75. And what do we need to multiply that by? Well, we got to multiply it by 100. And then the final question is, okay, well, how many contracts does, does uh, you know, Billy Bob want to buy? Well, he wants to buy three contracts. So you do that quick math there, and that comes out to, in this situation, $525 would, be, would need to be what Billy Bob has to have in his account. If he's got 525, fantastic. If he doesn't, well then he could go find another strike price that's maybe let's just say at 75 cents instead of $1.75 and then you know he can he can work the the numbers with whatever is in is you know in his account. But in this made up situation, if Billy Bob has $525 in his account, then he could, uh, you know, take place and you know trade and purchase three contracts of you know this exact option. Now, what about gains and losses? How how do gains and losses work? And this will be you here, okay? It's going to be you. So you're going to be feeling like a math genius because once again, it's super easy to do all this mental math and it's not complicated uh, because again, that's just options. Options but get a bad rap, but at, at the core, there's there's not a they're pretty straightforward. So. Once again, repeat, repeat with me. One contract represents 100 shares. And because of this, every penny, every penny the contract goes in your favor or against you, it represents $1, right? Because that's just the math, right? If you have 100 shares of something and you get 10 cents, well, then that would be $10. So every penny the contract moves in your favor or against you, that's gonna represent $1. So let's just go through this again, a little example here and show you how easy the math is. Billy Bob, now, did you really think Billy Bob looked like that? I mean, in your mind, what were you, how were you envisioning Billy Bob? But Billy Bob, he's not messing around, okay? But Billy Bob is, buys a contract and the value that he pays for that contract, the price he pays for the contract, you know, whatever terminology you wanna use, but it's at a dollar. And then after he buys it, the contract value actually rises and goes to $1.50. And again, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but if something goes from a dollar to a dollar fifty in value, well, that would be what? That would be an increase of fifty cents, right? That would be a fifty percent move in your favor, in in Billy Bob's favor. So, what is the math on that? Well, that would be a fifty dollar profit, right? Because if it moved fifty cents, and if each penny represents one dollar. Well, 50 cents represents 50 pennies, and if one penny represents $1, well, there you go, you got $50. Or if you just wanna see how the math works out, you just take whatever the movement was, you multiply it by, hey, that trusty 100 number again, and then you gotta multiply it by, well, however many contracts he actually had. In this situation, it was just one contract. But let's do a quick quiz here. What if Billy Bob had five contracts? How much would he make? So if you wanna pause the video real quick, I'll give you a second to pause the video, but that's the question. All right, well, let's change this up. Let's say he actually bought five contracts, but everything else is the same. Okay, welcome back if you paused. 50 cents, again, was the move, and you gotta multiply that by, as always, 100. Then the only difference here would be, well, he bought five contracts. So in this situation, that would be, if you said $250, correct. He would have walked away with $250 on that trade. So now we gotta organize it all. And I think of everything, this next part is probably what intimidated me the most. Maybe it kind of made me hesitate for the longest about, I don't know, do I really wanna learn about options? Do I really wanna learn to start to trade them? And that was the options chain. That big old thing right there. I would pull that up or I would see that. And all I would see is like just the matrix, numbers, columns, what is going on and when we break it down step by step. Now, maybe you're already looking and be like, oh no, I, I okay, I see that, I see that. Maybe, so maybe it's already not that complicated to you and that's awesome, but even if it is, let's just break it down step by step. And once again, options chains can look a little different depending on 
you know, the, the site you're using, the, the platform you're using, but at the core, they're still telling you the same things. So, you know, if, it, if on your platform, it looks a little bit different. If you still just look for these different attributes, they're there somewhere. Now, like I said, they might look a little different. Maybe they're in a, a little bit of a different spot, but everything is still there. They are still telling you the same information and it, all it's doing and why we're essentially ending here is because that's what it's doing. It's wrapping everything up. It's, it's organizing it all for you. And you know, once you get used to it, it's actually super convenient, super easy, um, and it, it does a great job, the options chain itself, of just organizing everything we've been talking about. So let's just go through it. So first off, remember, we have types of contracts. So the way this option chain set up, we have calls and puts, right? Those are the two types of options you've learned about, and there they both are on the options chain itself. We have, <laughs> there we go, the expiration date again, which I don't know if I've mentioned it, but that is the one big difference between options and stocks, okay? Just remember, there are expiration dates. So where is that? Well, I mean, if you can kind of read, you see that as one of the headers, and then you go down from there, and you can see that you have the exp expiration date of all those contracts. The next part is the strike price. And right there again, you have that column, you have all those numbers that are associated with the stock itself. So you have the strike price part of the options chain. And then the value of each contract at each strike price, well, that's gonna be the bid and ask over there. Now, if you're saying, wait, what, did it, what is bid and ask? Uh, you know, that's outside of this scope of, of, the, of the course here, but that's basically gonna be level twos. If you're like, wait, what's level twos? Again, that's outside of the scope of this course, which is fine. That just shows you that you have a little bit more learning to do. If, But if you're like, oh no, I know what you mean when you say bid and what you say ask and when you say level twos, then perfect. Well, there they are. That's basically the level twos there, uh, you know, the bid and ask for each one of those options contracts at each particular strike level. And then you have the number of contracts traded, or in other words, the volume, right? Hopefully in the world of stocks, you heard of volume which you know, instead of the number of shares traded like it would be in the stock market, in the options market here, it would just be the number of contracts traded at each strike price level. And then you have each of those right there. And that, that's, that's, that's as straightforward as it gets. I mean, that's what an options chain is telling you. And if you want you know, more information on any, any of those, at least as far as my broker works, you could go and click on any of those areas. But again, every, everybody will be a little bit different. But the next time you pull up an option chain or uh, maybe you've always been intimidated, hey, go look at it again and you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, I see this, I see that. And it's really gonna make that much more sense to you. But those are the big basics of options trading now, like I said, there there is more to it. There's more dynamics that go into it in terms of, for example, what strike pricing matters, other considerations that need to be made. Uh, but as far as just those core foundational, big basic areas, I wanted to get, just get you started so that you can you know, have a better idea. You can now talk intelligently, understand more so. If, if you hear somebody talking trades and you t hear them talking about buying a put, well, now you should know that, okay, well, that trader thinks that the stock price is gonna go down or someone's like, you bought a put? you moron, I got calls. You're gonna be like, oh, okay. So calls cup up. Okay, so that trader thinks it's gonna go up. No wonder why they're, they're having an, you know, a disagreement with that trader because that trader bought puts. He's trying to put something down the toilet because he thinks the price is gonna go down. So you now are gonna be able to understand those sorts of conversations. But like I said, yeah, there is more to it. There's more in terms of decision-making process. There's more to it in terms of you know why certain areas would make more sense than others. And that's what I do offer with uh, my training program. So I just wanna make you aware of it. If you enjoyed this video, if you like my teaching style, if you felt like you learned some stuff, you're walking away with a better understanding, then I just wanna share this more with you here. And this is just a, a bit of feedback I got from uh, probably one of my better known members just because uh, you know he made the, the $51,000 in one trade, but just says you have created a very special place on the internet for like-minded people to come together and help each other grow. So on that note, if you want to surround yourself with lots of other options traders, then you're going to be able to do that. And then as he continues to say, I've met many people in your program that I'm proud to call my friends. I've learned from a lot from your courses, webinars, videos, and people of the community. Uh, so that's what you get. You're going to get online classes. You're going to do, I do live webinars. There's other videos. There's trade journal videos. There's several options classes. So you will learn all about options and what it's called is just the trade and freedom pathway. So if you're interested in learning more, just go to claytrader.com, take control. Um, there is a, and I'll put the link down below. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put the link, uh, you know, right below in the description area, or if you're watching on the site, just right below the video. And then also because this video is now, you know, well over, uh, going on almost 30 minutes long. If you're still here right now at this very same moment, then I'll just give you a special offer. So I'll put a special special link down below and give you $100 off to the training program. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I don't offer this anywhere else on the site. Uh, I mean, you can go look if you want, but this is not some sort of, no, this is just literally a thank you for hanging out for me this long, giving me the, the opportunity and chance to be able to explain uh, these big basics of options trading to you. Um, so like I said, if you enjoyed this and you wanna now start to get, you know, 
take a deeper dive into things and learn everything, then I just wanna say thank you and, and give you that $100 off. Now, if you do want that offer, we'll put a special link down below again, if you're watching you on YouTube in the description area, or if you're watching on the site, I uh, just put it down below the video, and uh, you, by clicking on that, that'll just automatically give you uh, the, the the discount of $100. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this opens your eyes to options, and now you can have a better understanding of whether you're watching, you know, YouTube videos and understand what's going on better with these options trading videos, or if you just overhear conversations or, or want to just try to have a conversation yourself, you're not going to be able to talk more intelligently about it. So if this helps, if you enjoy the video please hit that like button. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. No, I know I kind of just did a, a conclusion within the, the, the video itself in the course, but if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button. Any comments, questions, leave those down below. And then also, as soon as this video is over, I'm gonna cut to another video that goes over a, a class that I teach for that uh, program that I talked about at the very end uh, of the class that you just got watching here. So if you are interested in that program and you wanna take advantage of it, but maybe you want just a little bit more details about me, my style, my strategy, how I go about things, and then learn, like I said, more about the program itself, then that will be all part of this class that I'm gonna cut to right now. So hopefully you decide to sign up for it. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm gonna to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.